Hi guys. Today we're going to work on walls for our book nook. Um, now there's all kinds of different ways that you can finish walls. Um, this, what I'm going to do is primarily just walk through all the different techniques for you. Some will have a demonstration, some I'll be showing products, um, some I may be giving you a link. Um, the easiest thing to start with, um, I have cut myself a whole series of pieces of styrofoam. Now these are actually uh, insulation. Okay, They're rigid, they're easy to cut with a, with a knife, and they make a great background for um, various wall applications. So I'm just going to be using these as my background now. I think many of you have got this kind of material, uh, but the techniques I'm going to be showing you will work easily, equally well on a chunk of foam core or actually on a piece of MDF directly onto a wall, a piece of wood. Um, these are all surface uh, techniques, surface embellishments, if you want. So we'll start with these. The, um, the very first thing, the easiest thing to do with a wall is to paint it. Now, actually, paint can be pretty boring, just plain old paint. You all know how to do how to paint, right? But what we're going to be working with, and just give me a second to shift the camera here. Those of you who've done any texturing will recognize what I'm about to do here. Now, what I have in this, in this little dish here is actually baby powder. So you have the added advantage of not only um, not only having paint with some texture in it, but your house is gonna smell pretty good too. So you see all I'm doing here is just mixing the, this paint, which happens to be ceram coat hippo gray into some baby powder, okay? Now what this does is it gives the paint a texture. It becomes thicker, obviously. And then when you actually paint it on your surface, you can see that you can actually start to get some texture. In there. Okay, so you can Now it's just really a means of thickening up your paint. Okay, but that gives you a, a kind of textured finish. Okay. Now it's gonna take a while for that to dry, um, but I'm gonna show you some other effects as well. Now this is a similar piece of styrofoam. And you see the, the it's starting to look like stone. Now this is actually still wet, but what I used to create that was this product here. Now it's called Krylon Make It Stone. There are other versions, Accents Stone Creations, for example. Now you can buy these in Michaels, you can buy them in um, a hardware store, but what that will give you is an effect like this, where you can actually see some texture because just plain old paint on a surface is not the most exciting thing in the world. And we want our book nook walls to have a little bit of pizzazz to them. And also it depends on what kind of effect you're trying to achieve. So let's leave the concept of paint for the moment and go on to wallpaper. Now you can purchase wallpaper with a whole bunch of different patterns. Now here's some different stone and brick and types of wallpapers that you can purchase. Um, wallpapers are fine for, for what they are, um, but they don't have any texture. All right, all they are is a flat depiction. Now for some purposes that works just great. And especially if what you're trying to do is, I'm going to just switch the camera here for a second. Okay, 
if what you're trying to do is create a scene. Now this is a picture that I took off the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, I've created a, I want to create a fairy garden. So this becomes my backdrop. And it's pretty bland and as it is. However, if you start playing around with it and start adding some pieces of, of actual wood to it, I can't get that to stand upright. Standing upright just fine before. Anyway, um, and putting in extra trees. You can see that now it's starting to take on some real pizzazz. Now, another thing I want to talk a little bit about is that if you're going to use a piece of mirror in here, and of course I cannot locate my mirror at the moment, but use a, a something to, to cover the break between the actual mirror and the wallpaper. Okay, so if you're going to put a piece of mirror in here, it's pretty stark where it joins the wallpaper. So use something like a tree to cover up that join. And then when you've got the reflection of the path going back, it's not quite so stark. Okay, now we're going to go on to looking at various ways of making textures. So I'll just okay. So here I have just a piece of that styrofoam that I talked about. Now here I have some spackle. It happens to be the quick dry spackle, and I have a what do you call these things? Spatula. <laughs> anyway, they're used for applying things like spackle to a surface, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a fairly thick coat of spackle on here. Now you can see that it's not the easiest thing in the world to get it real smooth. but then we don't want it all that smooth because we want to have, we want to play with this and create a texture for our wall. Now, if you want brick, for example, brick seems to be the most common um, surface texture. Um, there's a whole lot of different ways to create brick. And uh, Trinica has actually put together a really good resource uh, list of some tutorials that you can watch online. Um, I'll make that available on the website um, for people to have a look at. Okay, so now we've got a spackled surface. stuff dries out fairly quickly so be careful with it. Now the first thing I want you to realize is that you can actually draw in this stuff. Okay so you can you can make patterns of various kinds. This just happens to be a little wire wire brush and you can see that it's made a number of patterns in there smooth that out again. Now another thing that you can do is find interesting textures around your house. Now let's suppose that this is a, a peak of a house and this is just a little gadget that I found somewhere that I can actually press into stucco and when I pull it out huh, I'm supposed to have an imprint of it but I don't have it. okay so this 
this is going to have to dry a bit more before I can actually get it to take an imprint. Okay, to take an imprint of that little gadget that I showed you, it's going to have to dry quite a bit more. Now this is quick dry, so I'm just going to set it aside. But you can see that you can make an interesting texture with it while it's still partially wet. Now this takes about 15 minutes to dry, so I'm just going to set that aside for a while. And let's get out another piece of styrofoam. Okay, now another product you can use as well as spackle is wood filler, okay? This is um, golden oak wood filler. So this is, this is golden oak. Uh, you can get it in a number of different colors. Um, I like the golden oak because when it dries, it actually comes out looking sort of like terracotta. So you can uh, theoretically squeeze this out. I'm just gonna cut this back a bit more. I wouldn't actually recommend that you do this because this is an old tube. But let's get this moving. Okay, so obviously this is not going to work. I'm trading this for a um, white uh, wood filler. And I'll... Oh. Ah, that's better. Now you can see that this is quite a different texture to the, um, to the spackle. It's a, it, it, it's a little harder to work with. It's harder to get it smooth. But this is another product that you can use to get that nice stuccoy texture on your, on your building. And both of them take paint very well when they're dried, okay? So, I'm going to show you some, make this relatively smooth. Okay, and again, go looking around your house and see what you can find for various kinds of texturing things. Now, what I'm putting out here is a couple of sponges, um, a little, I don't know what that is. That is a stencil brush, toothbrush, nail brush. Okay, now what you can use here is, and if you feel them, you'll feel they're different strengths. So this, for example, can you see what kind of a texture that gives you? Okay, toothbrush. very similar texture, a little different. Now this sponge, as you can see, is extremely soft and it's not gonna do much of anything here. This sponge, on the other hand, is quite stiff. And will give you much more of a textured finish. Now, all of them, as you can see, give you a very similar effect. So what does this teach us? This teaches us that you can use just about anything to try it. Now, this kind of a gadget, which is a comb, allows you to do that kind of thing, which will result in a, I don't know what you might want to use that for, but if you're doing something like Diagon Alley, you might just want to, to draw something with it. And because this is a thicker, let's try our little sun guy again. No, that doesn't want to take the imprint either. Okay, so. I'm just going to put some more of this on here. Let's get rid of that. Um,
Okay, let's put some more of this on and make it a bit, a bit thicker. Try to make this as smooth as I can. Now these are some little acrylic gadgets. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a little pattern that I've made out of acrylic. And you can press that into the let's see, and it will make a A series of brick like patterns in your um, wood filler. Now, both wood filler and stucco can actually be. sanded. So if you don't see how that gives you that texture of, of various shapes of bricks. I've done a number of them just for experimentation purposes. But you can then, um, once it's dry, you can lightly sand it to take some of those edges off. And that gives you kind of a rough, rustic looking pattern in your, um, in your wood filler or your stucco, whichever it is that you're using. I'm just going to change gears here. Okay, I'm going to put aside the wood filler now and go back to the spackle. Okay, now this is this is getting quite dry. So again, we can use our sponge if we wanted to make a pattern in it. But what I wanted to show you was a number of products that you can use to turn this into something that looks like stone. Now, the first one, this is going shopping at the pet store. We start out with some bird gravel. And I'm just going to see if I can sprinkle just a little bit of this. Okay, now the trick here is to press it into the spackle. And as you can see, bird gravel, this is a very messy process. I would actually suggest you do this in a cookie sheet. Okay, but that gives you one type of stucco finish. So that's bird gravel. The next one at the pet store is aquarium gravel. Okay. Now this is a bit a bit heavier. You can see these stones are a bit heavier. And these can also just be pressed into your stucco. Like that. Now if you um if you don't care for the look of the white behind it, of course, this can be painted uh, after the fact. And um, using a um, piece of paper towel or something, you can pick up the excess. Um, pick up the excess water. So you use a wash to color the stucco behind. So you can see that the aquarium gravel are heavier stones. Now, depending on what scale you're gonna be working in, whether it's 148 or whether it's 112, you might want to go for different looks. Okay, so, so we've got the bird gravel at the bottom here, which is primarily in shades of gray. 
and we've got aquarium gravel. Now, actually, when you go to the when you go to the pet store, you're going to find aquarium gravel comes in all kinds of interesting colors. I chose a natural color, um, but you can get them in very various fluorescents and because they're going to go at the bottom of a fish tank. So I guess some fish like more. Um, what would you call it? Uh, of psychedelic surroundings and others. Now, another um, thing that you can buy. Now, this is from Michaels, and it is called Ashland Decorative Fillers. So this is another type of rock. So you press it into your spackle. You can see that this again is a different, a different color. But you can get quite an effective finish by using the decorative gravel. Now the, the last thing I'm going to show you, although I'm not going to open it, this is from a patch of seeds actually, and it's called cherry stone grit. Now that's again a different color. It's a grayish brown, but by choosing, by judiciously choosing the various kinds of, of stones, you can get different colors. Now here's another one. This is called Sand Decorative Accents. And again, it's available at Michael's. So you can take bits of this and press it into your spackle. And you can see that gives you, again, a different type of look. So you can get quite a lot of different um, effects depending on, and let's see, this is Games Workshop. This is a type of decorative sand that the game guys use and a different color. and with some smaller stones in it. So this is all things that I have in my, uh, my stash that I use for various kinds of finishes. So you can see the bird gravel here, which is the white and gray. You've got aquarium gravel here. You've got the decorative access from Michaels and two different colors of sand. And so they can give you a very, very nice stone-like finish. Now, when this is completely dry, okay, when it's completely dry and the stones are well set in there, I mean, they're, uh, they're not completely set in there at the moment. This is why you do it over a cookie sheet. So you press it down to make sure that they're in there. Now you can use then paint using a, a wash to color that white behind. Um, another way of doing it, and it gives you a similar effect, but not identical, is to cover your, your surface, whatever it is you're doing. This happens to be a piece of that purple styrofoam. To cover it with tacky glue, and then use the tacky to hold all the stones in place. If you paint the surface ahead of time, so let's say we paint the surface a dark gray or a dark brown, then put the tacky glue on, then put these stones on or sand on. The, the tacky will dry clear. The background color will show through. Your stones will also be higher uplifted off the backing rather than sunk into the stucco. So it's very much up to you how, how you want it to look in the end, uh, working with all these different kinds of textures. Okay, so we'll put this aside. Now, before we go on to uh, another do-it-yourself process, I wanted to show you, just let me clean up some of this stuff here. I wanted to show you some commercial products and that you can use If you're, if you're not into making your own kind of, of uh, textured surface. And that is the railroad modelers. 
No. These are also carried by, I believe, uh, Micromart, but um, Hobby Lobby or Hobby Wholesale, uh, any railroad store will carry many of these. It, they are particularly useful if you're working with O scale, which in our terms is quarter scale. Not quite so useful if you're working with 112 scale, although some of them you can sort of work with. This one, for example, is called clapboard siding. It's O scale. But at a pinch, you could use that on a 12 scale um, project. And these are just glued, they're styrene. They are just glued onto your surface and then covered with paints. All kinds of different uh, varieties. This one is tile, um, uh, two millimeter squares. That's very tiny, works beautifully for bathroom floors and quarter scale. This is a running brick pattern, uh, more clapboard, larger tile. And then these are, again, sheets. Now that's a brick. And then this one is a random cobblestone. So probably my Diagon Alley is going to have this cobblestone as a base. And then I will color it with paints glue it to the, you know, because I can cut a curved path out of it, uh, but it gives me that nice texture. Now, the other thing that you should keep your eyes open for, and that is, it, they're actually types of wallpaper, but they are textured. Okay, so for example, um, this is O-scale brick, and you can buy this from Micromart. I don't know if you can see, but it's actually got a texture to it. It's actually, see, you can hear it when I run my fingernail over it. And that uh, works very well. Now, the nice thing about that is that you can also get sheets that look like this, okay? So if you, and again, so you can hear it's textured. So if you were doing uh, windows or archways, for example, they've got pieces that you can cut out and apply uh, that are already, the brick is already curved for you. Okay, so that's, that's nice stuff, interesting stuff. It does come in other kinds of patterns. I can get my hands on some here. Okay, so we've got, this is a, See again, it's, it's textured. This is a nice pattern for some types of buildings. Um, this is very textured. It's called random medium cut stone wall, random stone wall. And I think that's all about the different types that I've got hiding in my bag of tricks here. Um, I've actually got a big container that is labeled textures in quarter scale. So these can all be either ordered from um, Micromart and they're pretty quick with their shipping. Uh, here's some of the other, the other ones that are on there. Small random stone wall, medium, large. Um, some of them like this large cut stone wall is almost big enough to use in, in 112 scale. So again, it's just a case of doing your measuring. And uh, here's a list of all the different textured building papers that they have. Uh, in O scale, they have red brick, yellow brick, cinder block, random stone, gray cut stone, shingles, cobblestones. There's all kinds of them. Um, so that's easier in some ways than doing your own. Now, um, I'm just going to take a little break here and get some stuff set up and we'll move on to making our own bricks. Okay, the next thing we're going to try here is carving some of our own. So I'm just starting with another fresh piece of the styrofoam. And you can find in Michael's, where else, or a hobby shop. These are all called ball, ball headed tools, ranging from, you can see the size of that one is fairly big, down to 
the size of that one, which is very tiny. Okay. Now the other thing you might want to use is an exacto knife. And it's fairly important to have a sharp blade on this because um, it will ruffle. So when you're cutting with this, you need to press down and fold. Okay, so if we wanted to cut a corner off, for example, see how it starts to, as I get deeper into it, it starts to kind of tear. So what I usually use, and I don't of course have it handy right now, is a big utility knife with a big blade on it so that it will go, I'll just go find it. Okay, so this is what I use is a big utility knife with a much, I mean, look at the difference in the size of the blade. So you can get pressed down and pull and get a much cleaner cut. Now, the nice thing about making your own brick using a, a carving it is that um, what you're going to need for this is a couple of ball headed tools or at least one, uh, your exacto knife and a straight edge. Um, okay, so uh, you can just play around with these. Um, Okay, for example, let's start with the biggest head here. You can see that I can press into this and get a, quite a distinct impression, as opposed to using the smallest one. And that will actually tend to cut the surface. So you've got to be quite careful with the small ones because it will break the surface, but it will give you a finer line. Now you can't draw with this. As you'll see, I'm using a, a pressing motion and pushing it in. Whereas with the bigger ones, you can actually draw with it. Now, let's suppose we're actually going to make brick here. So we're going to start out with a series of, let me see what size we want to try a series of lines, okay, across the surface. I'm using a ball headed tool. It's not the biggest one, but it's not the smallest one either. It's kind of a medium size. So we'll just Now, if I was doing this for real, instead of just for demonstration purposes, I would have first of all measured out my, my lines. Now, one of the nice things about using this purple insulation is that you can also line it up on the side. Well, you won't get quite as clean a line on the side. Don't press too hard or you'll kind of break through that surface tension. Now, why is this important? When you're using wallpaper and you wrap it around a corner, it does not give an effective look because real bricks are about eight inches long and about three inches wide. So in scale, that would be a brick for easy calculations that is three quarters of an inch by a quarter inch in 12 scale, okay? Um, those are roughly quarter of an inch apart. Okay, so we then have to on alternate rows. Okay, so we're gonna do this three quarters of an inch. Okay, so that's three quarters, that's three quarters. And that's three quarters and that's three quarters. And because it's three inches wide, they just fit exactly. How lucky is that, huh? Okay, so on alternate rows, you are going to emboss your brick. Now you'll see this isn't perfect, but then it gives you a very realistic brick look.
Now, I think this is called Flemish bond. There's all kinds of different brick patterns for the way people have put bricks together. Okay, so that gives us our first impressions. Our second ones go halfway. This is where I wish I had a... Clear ruler. So now we're going to do the alternate ones. Anyway, what I was saying is go on to Google and just Google brick patterns, and you're going to see all the different ways that over the centuries people have figured out ways of putting bricks together. Uh, a common one, for example, is herringbone, where the bricks are, are lined up at an angle to each other. Um, I'll show you a few of the patterns in, in a couple of minutes when we get to another stage of this. Okay, so. Now what I should have done is showed you how to make bricks out of egg cartons first. Then you would have realized that you will never make bricks out of egg cartons. You'll make them out of this because it's so much easier. Now, because a brick is eight by three, roughly, where you get wallpaper wrong is that you'll suddenly see a grout line on the edge here and another whole brick there. Well, that's not the way bricks really are. They really come, that one comes halfway because it's a full three quarter inches here. So it's a quarter inch there. This one's roughly a quarter inch there. So it, you leave that one plain and you get a very realistic looking corner on your, on your brick so that when you put your book nook put this against the wall, your bricks continue seamlessly around the edges. Now, when you've got your entire set of bricks done, and I mean, I'm going to just play at this end here. And I'm hoping that what you're going to do is actually play with your pieces of styrofoam or cut some small pieces off and work with them. So for example, let's draw an arc here. Okay, so I want to draw an arc like that. Okay, and my bricks are about eight inches. So I'm going to draw another arc underneath. Again, it works better if you've got things like paper patterns so you can actually do this properly. But anyway, you get the idea. And then I'm going to draw parallel lines in here like that. Okay, so can you see that? There you go. You can see I've drawn an archway. Now I'm going to, why don't I use a straight edge? Because, okay, so we'll draw a straight edge here. just making this whole out of the out of my head um, but when we get to actually building our diagon alley you could cut that out and insert into it an actual window so here we're going to have some more bricks coming down the side here Thank you. 
Okay. And let's finish it off right there. And like that. Now I'm going to angle these just for fun. Okay, and in the middle, they've got to be straight. And then we can very slowly start angling them as we come over to the side. Okay, you see my finished window. And if I cut that out, and I had somebody with a laser cutter to make me a window that fit in there, I got a pretty fancy window for my. Now, you don't have to make bricks. Let's turn this over. Let's suppose you want cobblestones. So, this is just a case of starting to randomly draw rocks, all about the same size or not, depending on what you want. And there I have the start of a cobblestone street. Now, it would be really nice if you could do the same with foam core. And you can, but you can see it takes an awful lot more work for the same effect. Okay, so this stuff is, is much more fun to work with. Um, if you had a hot, uh, I don't have one actually at the moment, but if you had a hot wire gun, you could actually make it thinner so that you could use it for, for flooring. But actually, if you want something really thin to make like a textured walkway as opposed to a wall, because this stuff is, is just the right, what I think is just the right thickness for just sticking up against your wall. With, and, and there you've got your, your, your brick going right around your corner. You've got a window that you can put a light behind and it doesn't take up much width in your book. If you want to do a walkway though, that might be the way to do it. Now what this is, is just a piece of terracotta dust clay, air dry clay that I just rolled out and then using I think I use the edge of a ruler to just make the long cuts like that. Okay, so just a, this is just a metal ruler. You'll notice it's got no cork back on it, so it's not going to be hard to do like that. And then I used, I think it was one of these. No, it was a bit narrower than that. Something that is. Hmm, I don't have anything right now. Um, or even just look around, something that's the right size to just make your cross pieces. Uh, when you're working with air dry clay, as opposed to this, it's better if you can just press something into it like that, because then you don't, because if you run this through while it's still wet, you get kind of ruffles of the clay pushed up to the side. You don't get that with the styrofoam, but with, this, with the air dry clay, you do. And then you can just set it on one side. Now this happens to be a square walkway or a rectangular walkway, but you could also do it with uh, any kind of a shape that you want. If you wanted a curved path. Um, when it's dry, it's relatively brittle. As you can see, it broke a couple of the bricks broke off here. So you can make it thicker or smaller as you, as you wish. Um, you can then seal it. I would paint the whole thing, the color of the, the grout lines, okay? This actually goes for any brick that you've made yourself, including egg carton bricks. Uh, once you've got your pieces all glued on, or in this case, drawn, or in this case, incised, um, 
paint the whole thing the color of the grout. And you don't have to worry too much about the top of the bricks, but make sure you get the grout into all the colors, uh, into all the lines, okay? Then one or two or even three coats of sealer go on this because you're then going to um, paint over the top using a, um, you don't want to get into the, the, the corners. So either a small roller or just dry brushing on the top to give the top of your brick some color. You can also do this in the reverse. So what you do is you paint the entire thing, the color of your brick and doll it up. So you've got all the different colors in there. Then put a coat of sealer on it, several coats of sealer. Then using regular grout, grout in the holes. So again, it depends on what you want your final product to look like. This process of just painting gives you incised grout lines. So there's actually a slot there. If you want your grout lines to be level with your brick, then you would grout it afterwards. I'm not sure why you would want to do that because I think part of the charm of brick is to actually see that it's raised. And if you have a completely smooth finish, why didn't you just use wallpaper? Anyway, that's my two cents worth. So this stuff is fun to play with. You can make whatever kinds of patterns you want. Um, you can incise all kinds of things into it. Um, let's try our little funny guy again. Let's see what happens with him. Mm -hmm. Well, sort of, not really. <laughs> I think to use something like this, you'd have to wait until whatever it was you were using was almost dry. Okay, now the last thing we're going to look at here, I'm not going to do egg cartons because I think that's fairly straightforward. Although, let's have a look at an egg carton just for the sake of argument. Okay, you'll see it's got all kinds of different parts to it. Okay. Now this part is particularly useful because here I said I wasn't going to do egg cartons and I'm playing with them anyway. Of course you know what we crafters are like. You put anything in front of us with a pair of scissors and we start fiddling. So this is a piece of the side of the egg carton. So this you could actually measure and cut into bricks. Now, on this side, it's got print and compliments and all kinds of stuff. So you're going to glue it with that side down. So you can cut your bricks out of this. It's a good occupation for when you're watching TV. You can sit and cut bricks till you're blue in the face. It will take you forever to brick a wall using this technique. Um, I think you're much further ahead to use the, uh, the techniques that we were just playing with like this. It's way faster and the effect is not, it, it's not the same, but it's not dissimilar, you know? And experiment with, a little, with it a little bit. Find out how deep you want your lines. Um, you know, I mean, you could even do it without any tools at all, just using your fingernails. Okay, so this gives you, this nice square piece gives you good bricks. But let's say you want cobblestone. Well, that's when you start doing this. You just start tearing pieces. And this is where you use up your, all your different funny shaped pieces. So you can start kind of fitting those together and gluing them down. And I would put a weight on them when I was finished, make sure that they stayed in place. And like the bricks, okay, so this is gonna give you a cobblestone-y type effect. 
when you've got it all in place and glued down and weighted and flat, then you can do the same thing again. Um, paint it the color you want it, then seal it really well, and then use grout. Although if you've got it well glued down, you may not even need any grout. Um, it, if you like, you better like doing jigsaws to do this kind of thing. As you can tell, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of, of uh, egg cartons. I love the effect, don't get me wrong. I love the effect afterwards. I just don't have the patience to do it brick by brick by brick. I'd rather go with this kind of an approach. Or my other favorite approach, let me get rid of all of this stuff, which is using stencils for bricks. All of this out of the way. carving tools out of the way. Okay. Now, there is a company in Britain called Bramley Craft Products, who specialize in stencils for bricks. Now, as you can tell, this is the one that I have used by far the most. This is 112 scale. Okay, it's pretty cruddy looking now, but it's just a piece of mylar. Um, and using this stuff, okay, you can buy this in Michael's. Stencil adhesive spray, okay, stencil ease. It adheres the stencil to the surface. So you spray one side of this, you fasten it down to the surface, making sure that everything is sticking. Then you use, well, of course, Bromley Crafts products would like to use their, their stuff. And their stuff looks like this, okay? Realistic brick compound. Now, this stuff goes a long way, but at nine pounds 95 for one bag, plus the shipping, and trust me, this is heavy, uh, it's difficult to use. So there are things that you can do that you can buy here. This one is red compound and it makes a very realistic grip. This particular one, is, I forget what they name this, but it makes a, a sand colored brick. Or if you're using, this works better for stone, this works better for brick. And 750 grams per bag. And after some experimenting, I have found that a very um, usable replacement for that is actually, um, sanded grout. Now the kicker is you add water to this sanded grout, just like you add water to that. But with the sanded grout, it's, I would really advise using a good couple of dollops of crazy glue, or not crazy glue, tacky glue mixed into there as well. Because sanded grout just by itself when it dries tends to be a little crispy, fragile. Whereas if you mix glue into it, it adheres well, it looks just as effective, okay? And because it's standard grout, it has that same kind of brick-like texture. Okay, so before I actually show you how one of these works, I'll show you what some of the other stencils look like. This one is brick, standard brick. This is flagstone, okay? So if you're, can you, I hope you can see that. If you're making patios or something, this is what I use for patios. And that's where that beige works really well. This is a random stone, uh, rough stone, 112 scale rough stone. So I hope you can see that, what that looks like. And everybody's favorite, herringbone. And coins, coin, that's one of my favorite words, Q-U-O-I-N. Now coins are 
the bricks that you find up the side of a building around a corner, okay? These are the, these are the strengthening um, stones that tie into the brick. You can see the rest of it is brick and it matches up actually to the brick stencil, which is under here somewhere. Um, it actually matches up to this brick stencil. So you can put your coins in stone at the edge. Um, one of the things that you can do if all you want is the coins say in that sand color, you can take masking tape and you can tape off all of these pieces so that all you've got are the coins. Now, Bramley Craft Products also makes quarter scale stencils. We've got herringbone and rough stone and brick and um, sorry, that's rough stone. This is uh, square stone. So there are, there are patterns that you can also use for, for quarter scale. Um, it's a little harder to work with this size, but you can do it. Um, so what you do And I am going to do something I'm not supposed to do. No, no. I'm just going to go away for a second and spray this and spray this with glue in an area that it doesn't matter if I get glue all over the place, like over a garbage pail. Okay, so I have sprayed these inside a garbage can. So. So did a little bit of the quarter scale one. Okay, so I'm gonna get out our spackle and see if this works. Now, I'm not guaranteeing anything at this point because I've never tried it with spackle. However, it's an easy thing to get a hold of. So let's try spackle and see what happens. Okay, so there's the quarter scale one. And we lift it off. And voila, almost perfect. So, that's one side. I don't know why that would have, hmm, could have been a fault in the, the thing. Let's try it with the larger scale one. But that would make a nice sidewalk in quarter scale. Okay, so. I should have painted this first so I'd have a grout that wasn't purple. One of the nice things about using the Bram Bramley um, craft product or grout is that it's the right color to start with. You don't have to really worry about painting it unless you want some kind of a decorative effect. Okay, let's try that. And voila, brick. Okay, these need to be washed fairly quickly. So I'm just going to cover up my spackle here for a minute. And I will be, I'm just gonna go rinse these off. Actually, this is repositionable. One last thing before I go rinse them off. This is repositionable 
supposed to be repositionable glue. So I'm going to try this again. So it's supposed to be good for more than one application. Let's just see what happens here. Let's see if there's something wrong with the stencil or maybe I didn't apply the spackle right. Um, so anyway, I think the bottom line is spackle works just fine. There, that time it's pretty well perfect. Okay, so that's got to be washed. Those have both got to be washed. Um, but it's white. So if you had painted the surface before you put this white on, um, you would at least have, say, a black grout behind a white stone. And then once it was really dry, you could carefully dry brush the top of it so that the black is still showing through the grout lines or the brown or the whatever color you picked. Um, uh, I'm going to experiment actually with cutting mylar to see if I can make my own stencils because I'd like to make some stencils that had different shapes on them so that they were more like this guy with the curved thing. But we'll see. Laser cutters can do some amazing things. As can cry cut uh, cutters. This is something that you could probably do on a Cricut, um, which would be to cut your own stencils out of mylar. But we'll see if we can do that. Anyway, got to go wash some stencils. Be right back. Okay, nice clean stencils again. Um, okay, so uh, you can purchase these, as I said, from Bromley Craft Products, which is an English, uh, an English company. And the uh, repositionable glue uh, for stencils, it works very well. The um, advantage of using, I, I just demonstrated this with using spackle. Um, Speed dry, LePage's spackling compound. Um, and it, it comes out quite effective. The difficulty is you've now got to paint it and make it, bring it up to look like uh, the real thing, okay? And um, if you use spackle, I mean, if you use grout, it comes in a million colors. You can buy a, a grout that looks like brick. You can buy grout that looks like stone. Um, it's just a bit fussier to work with because you've got to mix glue into it. Whereas this comes straight out of the box. However, that pretty well finishes all of the demonstrations. So I'm just going to, okay, there you go. There's a little walkthrough of all of the techniques that I've used one time or another to, um, to finish off walls of one, one sort or another. The one thing I didn't talk much about was, was using wood. Um, and you can do some interesting things with wood, just wood, uh, especially if you just take a big chunk of wood and stain it, it doesn't look quite right. But when you start to add things like wainscoting or shiplap, which is vertical boards, that are that are flush, so you see the the lines between them, but there's no overlapping. Clapboard where the wood is actually overlapped rather than shiplap, it's straight. Clapboard is overlapped, and board and batten, which is sheets of wood separated by vertical strips of smaller wood. Um, and wainscoting, again, Google it. There's a million different wainscoting patterns, so you can do a lot with wood if you if your if your room in your book nook is an interior room, you might want to try something like wainscoting. But for all of you who are planning to do an alley of one sort or another, Diagon, back, back alley in Montreal, uh, Mexican street scene, all of those kinds of things, the tutorial today should have covered a lot of the different things that you can do to make those walls look interesting and effective. See you next time. <laughs>